Welcome to Wizards of the Tower. Roleplay. And in this episode, yet more Roll of the Class. Welcome to Wizards of the Tower. Role play. And we're going to be hitting upon yet more Roll of the Class. We're going to finish up with the last of these from Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. Or at least the base ones. We may have forgotten a, a, a few. And if there are any, let us know. Yeah. So what are we starting with? Blood Rager. Blood Rager. What is a Blood Rager? <laughs> it's a barbarian that uses magic. Oh, okay. okay. Now, which is kind of interesting because in first edition Path or, uh, Dungeons and Dragons... A barbarian hated magic. Hmm. Could not use magic. Hated magic. Really? It was akin to attacking those who use magic. Really? Yes. So Blood Rager is kind of a, a mockery of that. Having a barbarian huh. that, that uses magic. So in the old style, first edition then, that kind of barbarian was more like the Conan kind. Yes. Of, trying to kill off Absolutely. the evil wizards. Okay. Absolutely. So then later on when they come up with the Blood Rager, it's kind of like, well, they use barbarian magic or wild magic or that sort right. of thing. Right, the raging, the raging yeah. gives them spells and everything else. Yeah. They're not quite as strong as a regular barbarian. They don't have the 12 hit points per level. Huh. They, uh, I think it's 10. That's still pretty good. But it's still very good. They're definitely yeah. they might even be might even be eight, but I'll have to, I'll put that up there. Well, I hope it is an eight, man. That'd yeah. be worth you'd be worthless as a barbarian if you're rolling d8s for yeah. your levels. But you can cast spells and your raging yeah abilities give you kind of some cool things. Are Nobody's they, ever played a blood rage or any of our games. Is it combat based more? They're a com very combat based okay. Okay. Uh, class. I figure what you'd probably have is a group of barbarians, and then their holy person is kind of like a, bar a blood rager. Yeah. Do you think it'd kind of work like that? Yeah, you could you use know? it. You could definitely use it like that okay. in, a, in a campaign. Okay. And I think maybe like a lot of these classes are, you know, okay, I want you to create an all barbarian campaign. So you're going to have to have magic in there. But you don't have a lot of wizards in your world. What do you have? Well, you got a blood rager. Yeah. Okay, they can use magic. All right, well, so we got an old all barbarian campaign. Okay. Yep. You know, and it, Pathfinder's really flexible like that. You know, it's really expansive that it can create these niches. For mm -hmm. all these different kind of characters to fit into, you know, we have an all barbarian campaign. We need a healer. Well, we probably have a cleric of some sort because we have gods of barbarians. Yeah. You know, so what else we need? We need an arcanist. Well, let's have a blood rager. Okay, there you go. So they fit into the arcanist mode. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And then they can use regular weapons, mm -hmm. unlike the wizards, which are kind of tied from squishy. using very squishy and, yeah. and using, you know, s swords and axes and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Uh, no one's played one in our group that no, I know of. No, no, not in all of our years of playing Pathfinder. We don't really. Ha we've never had an all barbarian campaign until now. But it's not really barbarian. Yeah, it's barbarian not, in in name. Yeah, in name, it's not real. They're not yeah. really barbarians, and so I don't know. <clears throat> I think you'd almost always you'd have to have a like a barbarian campaign, which is fine. We could probably put up one sometime. You know, and see what we could do, like an all all Conan and Valeria campaign. Oh, that'd be kind of fun. That, be that would be fun. fun. Yeah. Nyx is one that you've played and you rather enjoy. <laughs> Brawler. Yeah, I love Brawler. Brawler's your answer to a monk without having a monk. Yeah. And it's a fighter. Yeah. Brawlers do non-lethal damage, but brawlers can be incredibly strong and and powerful. Yeah. And fighting with. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, improvised. Improvised. Uh, improvised objects. Yeah. Grabbing a chair. Yeah. Grabbing the barrel. Yeah, so my whole idea of the brawler is essentially in the old <clears throat> in the old pirate movies. You always have the one big giant pirate who picks up the beer keg and throws it at the whole yep. gang of like five pirates, and the beer keg hits them and you know rolls them all over out the door. Now, those who play Pathfinder will know that if you use an improvised device, you actually take an attack of opportunity, and the brawler doesn't have to do that. Nope. Because they're they're adept, at basically using any kind of weapon they can get their hands on, yeah. and they're very very dexterous. Yeah. So they can do all sorts of things. Yeah. Like that. Think of your brawler as your boxers. Yeah. Your Muhammad Ali's, your Mike Tyson's, yeah. your Vander Holyfield's. You know they're up there, you know, fighting and punching it out. Yeah. 
and and in the old western movies, taking a chair, picking up, smashing it over yeah. somebody, or grabbing the bottle and smashing somebody yeah. with it. They're kind of fun. They're really fun because you play them as like a bully or a barroom brawler. Yeah. And uh, there were some scenarios we had. My my brawler, Big Lovely, was just a really big guy. Uh, in one game, he was a blacksmith. In another game, he was a cook. So I really enjoyed playing him as a blacksmith because then he had his little wagon and he had his, his blacksmith tools and stuff like that. And he wasn't a skillful blacksmith, but he could do some kind of blacksmith work. But he was big. He liked to drink. Uh, you know, he'd get into a tavern, get into a bar, and he'd never let an insult pass him, ever. If someone would insult yeah. or insult one of his friends, the next thing, he would they would be flying across the room. And if someone called him out, he'd be like, all right, you and me out in the street, five minutes. And they would go out, and they'd be, like, getting ready to draw their sword, and he'd pick up a bucket and fling it at him and hit him in the head, and then he'd come over and proceed to beat the living crap out of him. Uh, he, was, he was fun to play because his yeah. character was just like one of those characters that you always wanted to have in your group. Your big brother who, with the big huge fists who never never backed down from a fight ever. And the thing is he did non-lethal damage. And that really appealed... Well, at the start. At the start. Well, most, most, I think brawlers do non-lethal damage yeah. with all their strength because that's why, you know, and that they also have, brawlers also have this monk ability that is, is like... A, a, stunning fist almost. Well, stunning fist, but they can copy styles. So if they take on someone who has a particular fighting style, they can learn that fighting style from that fighter and then use it against them. So like someone who's you know really good with some kind of weapon, they can use that fighting style against them. And there's a specific feat for that, and I can't remember the name, but it's very useful. Mm -hmm. And my character used it. And I really wish we were in a campaign again when I could play Big Lovely because he was just a really great character to play big lovely retired he met a female blacksmith and yeah and, and retired they went off to create their own blacksmith shop and you know went off to have blacksmith kids but really what happened with big lovely is we were in a world that it was an evil world it's very dark and very dark and evil that's world. the one that had the inquisitors yeah it had the inquisitors and his thing was you could see character wise and I have I have a thing where I play my characters and if they're not working out in the world that we're in okay the best example I can give you is is another time I played Lucius Leechfoot my halfling thief and we were we were in this um, canned campaign where we were fighting Titan spawn essentially Godzilla's I had a little thief and I'm like this is dumb what am I doing? A little halfling thief with a light crossbow and a dagger fighting Titan Spawn. Yeah. This makes no sense. And so we retired out of that that campaign. Yeah. We never went anywhere in that. But see, that's the thing: is you know, have your character fit into the world that you're in. Yeah, sit down with your dungeon master, game yeah. master. Yeah, have a session zero like that because man, it can make a huge difference whether or not you create a character that's appropriate for that world. Yep. And to be honest, Lucius, Leech, Lucius Leechfoot was not good for that Titan Spawn world, and Big Lovely just was not good for the world we were in with the Inquisitors and the witches and the whatever the evil people, and he just yeah. was not fitting into that world, um, his character. So someday we're going to have a more lighthearted, adventuresome campaign, you know, that's going to be like pirate-based or adventure-based, pure adventure-based or something like that. And I'll play him again because playing a brawler is just super duper fun. Well, we've talked about uh, the uh, the pirate adventure and having him come in as, as a half ogre. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, I would still play him as someone who does non-lethal damage. Everything in Pathfinder is about burning your opponent, crushing them, dismembering them, killing them. You That's know, actually tabletop RPGs in general. I know, I know, and but the, the thing is, or fantasy tabletop RPGs in yeah. general. Yeah. See, the thing is, is like, I was raised on like the old pirate movies, the old westerns. Yeah. People got into fist fights, but the only person who ever really got killed was the bat was the boss, the baddie. Always got the rapier in the gut from Errol Flynn. Yeah. Everybody else just got beat up, and. It's a sense of nostalgia or whatever, but I, in today's modern world, with as as many troubles as we have, yeah, violence with have. all the violence that we have, I really don't think a lot of times it's appropriate to have a world and an adventure based on just killing everything in sight. Yeah. And that's why I always like playing the brawler. They would just 
punch the heck out of someone and then say, all right, you had enough? Okay. And then they would walk away yeah. and that's it. Well, it was kind of fun. Yeah. Investigator. Nobody's ever played an investigator in any of our games. Investigator is basically an alchemist rogue. But with the name of investigator, you'd think it was they were like a detective. Yeah. But they're an alchemist rogue? They're basically an alchemist rogue. They have some of the alchemist skills. They're not as, as focused as an alchemist. And they have the roguish skills of sneaking around and opening things and investigating. And But the, the alchemist part gives them some extra things to do uh, when it comes to hiding themselves or gathering information. And So kind of like a Sherlock Holmes type yeah. who knows something about chemicals and who can like yeah. trace fingerprints or follow footprints. Very or... much so. Okay, well, I could see that would fit into a certain kind of campaign again. Yeah. Again, you got to have a campaign where that character would fit into it. Yeah, yeah. You know, de definitely more of an int-based campaign than like a barbarian campaign. Yeah. I'm a barbarian investigator. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. mm. So I could see that. I yeah. mean, if we ran a, a campaign like, uh, like a really tight, controlled kind of a mystery campaign, that would be fantastic to play uh, an invest investigator. In uh, so Professor Dungeon Master, yeah, or Dunge uh, D uh, Dungeon Craft, okay, actually has been running a, an adventure that's thief based, and you could actually do it in a thief based, have an investigator oh. that would be you know part of the thieves guild that he's investigating for the oh. for the thieves guild, okay, you know, trying to trying to get the lowdown on mm. maybe where the treasure is or where okay. the person is hitting, and it'd be okay. a, kind of a good person to have for that. Yeah, but he's playing in five E instead of or his uh, his own. Adventure uh, Deathbringer. Well, okay, so uh, you could play it as like the investigators, like a gang of cops mm -hmm. going after the Thieves Guild, trying to break them or arrest them all. Or you could play them as more kind of chaotic. They could be like a crooked cop walking the line between yeah. the two. Yet they're also still an investigator trying to solve the crimes. You know, yet because they're roguey, they're sort of like, uh, maybe they're like a private detective. Or like Thomas Jane's character from The Expanse. Ah, yes, a private detective. Everybody always loves a private detective. It would be cool to do a private detective adventure, especially if you had a couple of private detectives as a group. You know, not so much violence-based, but really more int-based and or wisdom-based. You could even throw in the cleric, like have Clad Cadfell. Yeah, you could. That yeah, make Cadfell. Of course, like like I said, you know, in an earlier episode, I'm a real fan of medieval mysteries. And, you know, Cadfell was a monk who was, he knew a lot about herbology yeah. and alchemy. Those are, those are some fun Yeah, fun those shows. are fun shows. And he was also a crusader. He was a fighter. So he could do a lot of different things and He'd investigate. Retired that, yeah. He had retired from that, yeah, into a, into a monastery. So that's an interesting idea. Yeah. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of variabilities and a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, ways you could play this, you know, depending on your campaign. So that you could you could work this character out and make it very complex and make it really fun to play. Yeah, absolutely. Shaman. Shaman. Shaman is you could throw that into the barbarian campaign. Yeah. An oracle slash witch is basically what they are. Um, every you know our idea of a shaman is you know some tribe in the Amazon. Uh, it's like a witch doctor. You know you got a primitive yeah. witch doctor. You know that kind of thing, a shaman. They're like they're like a um, holy man from a primitive tribe, you know. Um, yeah. They, they they're very animal based, plant based, nature based. Or Viking or or Celt, ancient Celt or Gaelic. Well, then if you go Celt though, you start getting into the Druid aspect of it. You do. And you you get into the Celt Druid, yes. not Druid in here, but a Celt Druid kind right. of thing. I, 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 yeah, the Shaman's kind of one of those characters where. Again, I think it's going to be very, very campaign specific as to mm -hmm. how this character is going to fit in. Yeah. Have we ever had a shaman? No, never had anybody play shaman. Okay, shaman, shaman. Um, yeah. Cross between an oracle and a witch. I could definitely see that. Yeah. A holy person with witch-like powers. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I mean, if you had more of a campaign where you had a tribe-based. Um, kind of a primitive tribe-based setting, you know, and there was some kind of an adventure. Uh, I, I could see the shaman mm -hmm. being being very, very 
focused, yeah. very, very central to that Especially adventure. Especially if you played a kind of Neolithic mm -hmm. type of adventure, which I've actually planned on doing one sometime if I can get anybody who's interested. <laughs> Tom's interested. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, okay, you know, the, the, the book that came out a long time ago, Clan of the Cave Bear. Mm -hmm. All right, well, great. I mean, pretty good books. I, I, I could only read the first one. I mean, it was so long and kind of boring, to be honest. And then, then there are like seven others, and I tried to read the second one, and I was like, man, I, this, uh, this is a cure for insomnia. I'm not saying they're bad. It's just, to me, there needed to be a little bit of something happening here. But there was a character in there who had the bear skull, and he lived back in the cave, and he was the, he was the keeper of the bear skull. That, to me, is a shaman. Yeah, well, there was there was that uh, one about the young boy and the wolf. That he had shaman type people that were in there. Oh, that's true. That's true. Can't think of the name of that movie. Yeah, I can't either. But I know that was a Neolithic. I know which one you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, you had you had the the one priestess in there who mm -hmm. I called her a priestess, but she would be really more like a shaman. Yeah. Um, and she was trying to pretend what had happened. To the boy, if I remember the plot right, and no one could figure out what happened to him, yeah, because he was separated from his tribe. Uh, good movie, actually. If, if anybody's ever seen it, we can we can pop it up. Uh, really good movie, and I think you bought me that. Yeah, you beat that I did. Blu-ray. I like watching that. That's a fun movie. Um, shaman cross between an oracle slash witch. Well, that's a way a, to look at him. It's a character you can you know construct a campaign around if you wanted to, mm -hmm. or even an NPC. Yeah. Swashbuckler. I've played quite a few swashbucklers. Fun, 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 fun. Yeah. The problem with swashbucklers is they work best if you're in a group of other swashbucklers. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I mean? I mean, if you're if you're like the three musketeers, that's great. If you're the one musketeer and you're in a group with a bunch of, you know, barbarians or something, it's like, what is this guy doing here? My first swashbuckler was in a game with a monk, a bard, and I can't. There was there. Oh, there was the druid. The druid that liked to turn into the tree in the middle yeah, of the desert. That, was, that campaign. Yeah. yeah. Captain Gabriella Fullpepper. Yeah, she was fun. That was fun, and you had a fantastic uh, figure that you painted up for that. Hopefully, yeah. you'll be able to show it. Maybe eventually. Um, that was a great. That was a great fun. That was yeah. great fun. Really, I think that a swashbuckler belongs in more something like along the lines of a seventh sea adventure. Yeah, to really make them work out. Well, or or doing, doing a uh, a musketeer based. Yeah, you know whether you're doing the investigator and you've got your maybe you got your your magus and your inquisitor, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah. your cavalier and yeah, and your swashbuckler kind of fits all in there, you know. And then you can have your rogue as well. Yeah, swashbuckling. You know, you always think about them as is you know fighting. Two hands, you know, dagger in one yeah. hand, a rapier in the other, or a little bitty, a little bitty uh, shield and a sword. Or you got you know. your rapier and you got yeah. your your flintlock pistol. And yeah, that kind of thing. It's like not necessarily pirate, but certainly kind of a roguey adventure yeah. game. And then the second one I got to play in was the pirate mm -hmm. AP. She was a swashbuckler in that as well. That's true. My character was the ship's cook. Yeah, yeah, that was fun until we all died. <laughs> I didn't mm. die. <laughs> I think there were seven or eight players, and three of us survived. Yeah, it was a it was an almost a TPK. Yeah, but we won't go into that. But yeah, swashbucklers are kind of fun. Yeah. I think they're more centralized towards a specific kind of adventure mm -hmm. than what your your base. Yeah, high fantasy. Yeah, they're more the the seventh sea and kind and of a piratey, piratey, roguish highwayman, three musketeers, three musketeer kind of thing. I think they would be good. Scarlet Pimpernel. Yeah, there is there is a Galarian. Um, world and there's a Galarian country that's set up for that kind yeah. of thing where they have stagecoaches and horses and and they have castles and and that kind of well, stuff. We all have castles. But well, yeah, but it's more. They even have the pirate. It's more like a high Renaissance kind of yeah. adventure. They do have the pirate. pirate they do have too. the pirate one too. Yeah, the, yeah, the Sword Coast. I think it is. So you could play, you know, that kind of a character within there, and that would be fine. I, I think yeah. it'd be really fun to play, you know, because. You know, I'm old enough to, you know, both of us remember a lot of the swashbuckler movies oh, with love, Errol Flynn love and Anthony Errol Quinn. Flynn. And, ah, oh, it's so fun, you know. Uh, just a lot of laughs and a lot yeah. of adventure and a lot of stuff like that. And 
you know, they were really cool to watch, and we were kind of raised on those. And we had this idea, well, that's kind of where adventure is, and it would be great to have a campaign based on that. Sure, mm-hmm. Zorro. Zorro, yeah, Zorro's great. That's a great Zorro's idea. Zorro's basically a swashbuckler. Pretty much, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Now, that's really interesting, because you could play like a Zorro campaign. You know, where you have Zorro and a couple other swashbucklers, and they're mm-hmm. trying to right, right all the wrongs. And you could in have the, the Inquisitors kingdom. in there, too. Yeah, because... yeah, you could. That'd be fun. You know, you could yeah. really do it. Uh, you know, one of those classes, I think, that people just don't address enough. And really, they don't. Um, get so much potential, never really yeah. properly addressed, mainly because people go for the core. You know, fighter, cleric, wizard. Barbarian, sorcerer, sorcerer, monk, whatever. Right. They never think about going down the list and coming up to something like the swashbuckler, that could be a, just one yeah. a barrel of monkeys fun. Yet it, it's kind of one of those things where, again, you'd have to have more of a campaign based around that. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, definitely. Swash, swashbuckler though is a very specific type of adventure mm-hmm. type. Very fun. Mesmerist. Well, I have a mesmerist. A no mesmerist. No mesmerist. Uh, very fun to play mind affecting spells. Kind of arcane. Yeah, yeah. Again, that sort of fits into my idea that a lot of what he does is non lethal. A lot of it's mind affecting. Yeah. Um, that I created my little gnome mesmerist who actually disguises himself as a human child, because in the campaign he's in, he's not allowed to use uh, not allowed to use a magic. Because arcane. He, arcane, because the Inquisitors will hunt him down. So he disguised himself as a human child, and gnomes are looked on terribly in that world. They're looked yeah. on as just as thieves and despicable rats and stuff. Yeah. Um, so essentially what he does is he uses mind-affecting spells. He clouds people's minds. He makes it harder for them to hit him by projecting mirror images of himself. Mm-hmm. It was one of the few times I've ever been able to make ghost sounds work. Because the save on it is so high. His yeah. magical ability was so high that when we were fighting some guys, I had... I, I Threw ghosts on behind him and they yeah. looked behind. And yeah, and they're like them. turning around and they're like thinking someone's really behind him and it, and it gave us a great advantage. So, uh, and the thing, there's also these spells they can use, like these different kind of sparkle dust spells that essentially mm-hmm. cloud their vision for two or three rounds so that they can't see what's going they are on. a great debuffer. Yeah. That's, that's their main job is debuffing yeah. the enemy yeah and then getting away with things you know exactly. convincing people that you know of, i think there were things that you did you were convincing people of things and getting yeah. getting things cheaper and absolutely i mean we're getting things for free because yeah. i mean they're, they're, they they invade people's minds with their own mind and that's what you know he was only armed with a dagger he didn't yeah. even have any kind of weapons except his spells but his saves gnomes get actual uh uh, they get boosts turning to, the bad guy to fight for you you did that because there were I monsters did. that were they would yeah. be coming up to the party and you'd mesmerize them and it would turn them against turn and fight their own <laughs> kind yeah see that's that's what's cool about a mesmerist um you know he wasn't even armed with anything other than a dagger but his spell saves were so high because gnomes get boosts to spell abilities and i think mm-hmm. his saves are like some of his spell mm-hmm. saves were 18 19 and 20 will saves now most people don't have <laughs> no. very high will you know my, my my fighter's got a plus two will save roll it and see uh, i roll a i roll a seven dude yeah, you okay, now you're carrying yeah, down your back yeah you now and think that's... yeah you now think your mother is down that corridor yeah, and she's like... hurting you got to go help her in fact i think you were doing that you were having one of the party you were using the party member to carry you around yeah i never had to walk anywhere so my my child here my son yeah i just had him convinced you know on a daily basis i would keep casting the spell that i was like a little foundling that he had to carry i never had to walk anywhere he would just put me on his back and walk around with me oh do 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 you know here's this little i found this little wastrel begging in the street i'm just carrying him around so he won't you know get beat up or something it was totally fun <laughs> You know. It was a lot of role playing fun. Yeah, great role playing. Yeah, fun. and of course we had a stick in the mud character in the game, <laughs> a player who hated that kind of stuff, and he was always trying to find a way to trip me up because he hated how I played. Well, it's just funny because he, he he was playing a brawler after you did because he yeah. saw how good the brawler was yeah. was doing. He was playing a brawler after. And that. since there were no monks, he wanted yeah. to play the closest thing he could play to a to yeah. a monk was the brawler. Yeah, so. I don't know. We had a lot of fun. I would definitely play a mesmerist again in a heartbeat. Yeah, they especially would, as a gnome. Yeah, 
Uh, and it was play just, upon the, the you know it's not min maxing upon it you're playing upon yeah, you know the yeah. role of that is the way I see it yeah and and it does appeal to me to my my idea more of creating some a character who isn't so violence and homicidal based you know when it comes to these role playing games folks I mean, a lot of people like to hack and slash but I like fighters who use more mind control and you know. I, I just, to me, it just appealed to me more so. Yeah. So, I, I, I would play a mesmerist again in a heartbeat if I yeah. had a chance. We're going to do the spirituals, and then we're going to hit upon one other class that's no longer available. At least as a core class. But the spiritualist. Now, we've never had anybody play a spiritualist, but we actually have somebody in our current campaign who's playing a rogue who wanted to play a spiritualist because of their backstory. They wrote in that their sister had died in uh, as a child and he could see see this apparition of his sister and she would help him in times kind of point him in, in directions and things what uh, <laughs> so i don't think i think i'm probably along with the rest of the people in the group is we're not really even sure what that is yeah so a spiritualist <laughs> is very much they have a a phantasm that's that's a part of them that's that's become kind of entrapped in them or that or, or that's become one with them that helps them cast spells and do healing and, and other things and can even do some minor fighting to help them out conduits into the spirit world conduit that's, into the spirit world that's kind of what it sounds like now with uh with this player josh uh when Josh approached me on it, I'm like, okay, uh, this isn't an allowed class, but we could do this. We could we could add this in because it was he, he wrote it into the backstory, and okay. we've really made him pay pay a price for it mm -hmm. because he decided he wanted to do this and he went and approached a a uh, high level shaman witch. Uh, person. Cleric person in the game yeah. in this Viking campaign, and uh, told them, you know, about their sister, and and said, well, yeah, you know, this is a possibility, and and they took these f uh, finger bones, oh yeah, and, yeah, 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 and I cast them into into the hand, and the hand, his hand seized up seized and up squeezed them. them, yeah, and yeah. it hurt, it hurt, it was great pain, and then yeah. wrapped it up with with these bandages and cast yeah. some spells on it and it hurt it throbbed all the time he could not use his hand as as a as a rogue he could only use his left hand right but so it limited him for things he could do but isn't he going to absorb the ro the, the rune bones into he his body he actually is getting two spirits now we we kind of rewrote the rules for it because uh. he's going to get his sister and then he got this this other person that were the bones it's a very chaotic uh person who's very self-centered wants to be the center of attention wow. was a crowser drinker so he's got to to portray some of those, wow. those attitudes at times and because it's now part of him so this thing kind of drives him and and now he's become in tune with both his sister and this other one and his sister kind of keeps it in check not totally in check but kind of in check that sounds pretty complex but it's it also complex. sounds really intriguing yeah Essentially, and it's a person who's got. I mean, it's almost they're possessed. Like, they're possessed. It's almost like a Stephen Kingish kind of possessed <laughs> oh, person, yeah. you know, who has like something inside of them that they let out every once in a while, or that guides them with you know talking to them, you know, kind of like oh, that's just that's just so strange. Like they have a ghost following them around. Yeah, that can pop out and, and help them do things. Now the interesting thing is their fighter in the group is terrified of undead oh yeah and if he sees undead he'll drop if he makes his if he fails his, fails his fear yeah he drops his sword and he books it so yeah, yeah. it's going to be interesting yeah. to see what happens if, yeah. if this phantasm this ghost comes out and uh <laughs> and and frostolf sees it and and goes running off drops his weapon they're being hey, fighter i think <laughs> it's cool because i love yeah. ghost stories and and Josh, you know, really wanted to try and role play this. He's yeah. he's not. He's he's new to gaming because he played with Five E and then he joined us in Pathfinder and he's really enjoying Pathfinder. Yeah. 
and wants to expand upon uh, role playing, and he wants to use this to help him role play. So that's cool. to build upon his role playing. So that's cool. spiritualists, you know, have that in touch, uh, you know, using the spirit to help them do things and and heal and other things. So. It's kind of an interesting class. I like that idea because, like, I, I love ghost stories. Yeah. And I love, I mean, I'm the romantic in me loves ghost stories yeah. like that. So, to me, having a character who's flawed in the sense that they have these ghosts hanging on them, you know, these spirits from this, yeah. the nether realms hanging on to them, either bothering them or guiding them or channeling them or something like this, to me, that sounds really intriguing. It's kind of like Ghostbusters. <laughs> but in a good I'm way. Vince Gortho. Are you the key master? <laughs> yeah. But in a good way, not necessarily like how that is. But yeah, to me that sounds really cool, and I, I hope he's able to play it yeah. to the hilt. Yeah, yeah. We'll see where it goes because the the rules of the campaign, you couldn't multi class. You can multi class, but only after you reach third level, and your main class has to always be higher level. Yeah. So we'll see where it goes with it. Yeah. It'll be fun. So the last class we're gonna hit upon before we end this these uh, roll in the classes is, is a class that's no longer officially there you can play one kind of sorta and that was the illusionist in first edition they had an illusionist character class which used magic as an illusion like a magician very right? much like a modern magician oh, using illusions i didn't know that. oh yeah yeah very interesting class i know in like either the first or second edition they had the assassin and they, they also had the assassin and they had to get rid of the assassin because people were getting like, hey, you know, you're teaching our kids to be killers and yeah. stuff like that. But I did not know they had illusionists. Yeah, there was an illusionist, and wow. their their spells were very illusionist based. And then they combined all that into in three and three point five. Would that later be kind of like a mesmerist in a way? Kind of like a mesmerist in a way, okay. using illusion to, okay. yeah, yeah, you know, to help deceive and, and fight. I like that. Yeah, I like that kind of thing. Yeah. I like you know guys who can project images or. You know, kind of like throw up a fake. You know, we've all watched enough Scooby Doo to know. You know, <laughs> and what what a couple of bad guys and a few projectors can do to scare people. Yeah. You know that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, I, I, I just think that's really neat. You know, that you could have a character who basically can use mind control. Yeah. You know, to fight or to resolve a situation. Yeah. And you hit upon the assassin. I actually did a. I was playing as a as an NPC for a dungeon master, and I was actually playing an assassin. Whose, whose whole role was that the dungeon master gave me was I needed to take out each one of the party. Wow. And talk about cruel, you know, and and I did it. I actually took out every one of those party members without them ever figuring out that I was the one behind it. What? Was that in first edition? Or that second? was a first edition oh, campaign. It was a rather large group that played out in eastern Colorado, a little tiny small town in so eastern Colorado. I, I, could <laughs> see, I could see that being... Uh, if you weren't mature enough within your group, I yeah. could see that as being very problematic. And nobody was angry about it because of the way the campaign was designed. Okay. And they didn't know that here I was, this assassin. I was working with them, but I was actually working against them. Mm -hmm. So, okay. you okay. know, and they never figured it out. Had they figured it out and taken me out, it would have been, you know, one thing. There was also the ninja and the samurai, which we didn't hit, on, hit upon, but the samurai is basically your paladin in a... In a uh, Eastern campaign yeah. and your ninja is basically your your rogue, yeah. it's a, it's a rogue assassin in an Eastern campaign. But with that, we're going to end these episodes of Roll of the Classes on Wizards of the Tower. And uh, we want to thank you for your attention. I know that these are kind of long, and we talk about all these different classes and stuff. Uh, but the thing is, is we're trying to present you uh, a lot of different areas that you can go with your characters. And you could try to have fun with the complexities and the foibles of your different characters that you're going to create and, and the worlds you build around them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, you can build a world around a character or sometimes you can build a world and, and populate it with certain kinds of characters. Yeah. yeah. And definitely, you know, if you have a session zero, sit down with your dungeon master and talk yeah. about the feasibility of, of these classes in their adventure. Yeah. You don't want to have somebody say, I want to play a dolphin. In a desert. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because I was actually in a local gaming store the other day and heard that that exact same thing. Yeah, you can actually play a dolphin. Okay, and I'm just like face planning. So anyway, as yeah. I kind of jumped ahead of myself That's before okay. 
Tom there. So thanks for watching Wizards of the Tower. Role play. And may all your adventures be epic. And keep on rolling. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.